So I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the American Leadership Forum and our co-sponsors for this event, the Monterey Institute, the Commonwealth Club, and the Knight Foundation. My name's Don Waters, and I'm a founding board member of American Leadership Forum and a member of Class One a couple of years back. And I've been asked to give you a little bit of background on uh, ALF, uh, the uh, Uncommon Exchange, and then introduce our conversationalists for the day. So, first of all, ALF, for those of you who don't know, is an organization that's designed to promote the common good by bringing together a diverse cross-section of leaders. And specifically, what, what this does, what the organization does, is it identifies folks from across various sectors who have different points of view on subjects of every kind, and it brings them together for a year-long program that's designed to help them understand how to collaborate with people who have a different view of things than themselves. So it's all about collaborative leadership. And during that year-long program, in addition to that, the folks are given an opportunity to actually work together on projects for the benefit of the community. And after their ALF fellows year, they go out into the community, serve as board members on nonprofits, on government commissions, et cetera. So the whole thing is designed to help people who want to better their community get involved and be prepared to do it effectively. Now, about 10 years ago, those of us who've been involved in ALF for a while were going over our stats, all the objective measures. One of those was diversity. And we did all of our objective statistics in terms of uh, ethnicity, educational background, business sectors, et cetera. We were doing fine, but we were concerned that maybe we weren't quite as diverse as we aspired to be. And one of our folks captured it very well. He said, you know, we fit all the targets, but when you look at everybody who's in ALF, they all went to the same kinds of schools, they seem to live in the same neighborhoods, and even have the same opinions about things. Okay? They were not diverse at all. So what we need to do is worry less about how people look and more about how they think. And what we ought to do is focus on engaging people who think differently than, quote, the rest of us. So that's this thinking differently is the spirit behind the uncommon exchange. So this is 10 years on. What ALF is trying to do is bring people together with different views and explore important issues. So that's what we're uh, really about here today. So, the Uncommon Exchange is not a lecture series. Uh, it's not a political debate. It's not a Q&A of experts. It's an adult conversation among people who have different views. And the idea is to inform the rest of us who are observing and will later participate in some of this, a chance to really understand what the problems or opportunities are that we're trying to deal with and what the issues are that are attendant to those problems of, or opportunities. So that's what we're going to be doing here. And the participants here in the fishbowl in this conversation will be three people from ALF, various classes, various backgrounds, who have different opinions about the topic. And we have one headliner guest, who I'll introduce them all in just a moment, who has some opinions, I'm sure, as well. And they will in, in, engage in a conversation. And the process will be explained to you a little bit later. So the objective, again, is to help all of us understand better uh, the issues that we have to deal with in the community. The overall theme of the uh, Uncommon Engagement Series, Exchange Series, is courageous leadership. How do you make difficult, unpopular decisions in a, against very uh, complex and controversial issues? Okay, so let me introduce today's conversationalist. First, from ALF, uh, Diane Solinger, right here. Diane is the executive director of the Entrepreneurs Foundation, which promotes corporate philanthropy and community involvement, particularly for early stage companies. She spent 20 years in the nonprofit arena, working with American Heart Association, American Cancer Society, uh, her University of Colorado, and United Way. She's a member of ALF Class 18. Second, Mark Jones next to me. He's from Class 16. Spent 25 years in the technology arena. He describes himself as a serial entrepreneur. Uh, he's the chairman of Visionel. He was the president of Madge Networks. 
Earlier in his career, he was an SVP at Chips and Technology. He was an investment banker and a corporate lawyer, securities lawyer also. A lot going on there. He's also been involved in a variety of local nonprofits. But what I found most interesting in his bio was he's on the board of a national uh, organization called Management Leadership for Tomorrow, which is aimed at helping people of color get into and pursue business careers. His org that organization was written up in Fortune Magazine and CNN not too long ago. Our third ALF for across, diagonally across from me is Chris Block. Chris is ALF's C CEO. He's the boss, member of Class 16. He spent 20 years in the nonprofit arena, mostly in affordable housing and, uh, as executive director of Charities House Housing. He's a Kellogg Foundation fellow, a national organization, and I understand he's a loyal fighting Irish fan. <laughs> Finally, our headliner, T.J. Rogers, the founder, president, CEO of Cypress Semiconductor. We're delighted to have you with us. Thank you. Uh, he's chaired the Semiconductor Industry Association. Uh, what I found interesting about uh, the material I received was he's on the boards of some companies that have very little to do with semiconductors, apparently, in the whole energy area. He works, uh, he's on the board of a company that is in energy conservation systems, fuel cells, and uh, solar power development. Uh, he's an alum of Dartmouth, and he's a trustee of their board. What I found interesting, though, was his Stanford work. Uh, I've been told he invented, developed, patented, and sold VMOS technology a couple years ago. Very impressive. The Wall Street Journal describes Cyprus as the quintessential entrepreneurial company. And Upside Magazine said that TJ is one of the 100 people who's changed our world. You may know that he's a strong supporter of capitalism, individual freedom, shareholders' rights. What you may not know is his involvement in community activities. He was the first CEO to lead the seven, second Harvest Food Bank Corporate Challenge. And I understand that last year his organization won for the 17th year in a row the uh, prize for greatest poundage of food per employee donated. He's also received a star award from the Green Scholar Program, which is a program designed to help African American students pursue math, science, and technology careers. And he received an award in 2000, 2001, and 2002, three years running. Uh, for his support of the George Washington Carver Scholarship Program. We were introduced to TJ by Brenna Bolger of PRX, who was also a member of ALF's founding board. Let the conversation begin, Chris. 